Well, we are going to continue in our series, Bold. Bold for God. How many want to be bold for God? Amen. So we're going to talk about that. And being bold for God includes our prayer life. And so we've been looking at a few bold prayers. In fact, Proverbs tells us, uh, 28.1, the last part of the verse says this, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. In other words, God's people, those that are right with God, they don't shrink back. Amen? They move forward for God. And they don't shrink back in letting God do work in their lives. How many want God to do some work in your life? Right? Well, you got to be bold with your prayers. A couple of weeks ago, we, we, we talked about a prayer that we can pray that's like this. Search me, O God. And know my heart. See if there's any, or tell me, you know, tell me what my fears are and see if there's any wicked ways in me. We don't wanna, we don't wanna shrink back. We wanna let God show us who we really are so change can come. Amen? And then we talked about uh, praying a prayer like this break me. Now that's a bold prayer, isn't it? (laughs) You know, break me. What does that mean, right? We just want God to uh, do a special work in the sense that we want His will rather than our will. So easy to default to our own ways, isn't it? But we want God's will in our life. We want him to remove anything that's offensive in us that would keep us from doing his will. And today we come to another bold prayer. Are you guys ready for it? The bold prayer today is, send me. Send me, all right? You know, we pray for a lot of things, and, and it's great that we do. We pray for health. We've heard some testimony here of how God heals. Uh, we pray for jobs and career direction. Um, we pray for family stability. Um, I don't know about you, but I pray about relationships all the time. I pray for um, uh, freedom from addiction. If, if that's an issue in your life, we pray for those things. We pray for protection. Right? All those sorts of things. We pray for provision. That's just to name a few. I mean, we pray for a lot of different things, and I'm so grateful we do because God welcomes all of those prayers, and, and he's listening, and he's waiting, and he wants to intervene in our lives and do powerful things. In fact, that's why I love our soup and prayer group, um, our life group on Tuesday nights, because all of those prayers you write down on your connection cards... We get together and we go through them one by one and we pray and we see God do some incredible thing as we look things as we look back, you know, over time. This person has been healed. This person has a new job. This person's marriage has been healed and and on and on and go. So it's an honor. It really is an honor to pray uh, for those requests. So continue to put those requests down on those connection cards. We will pray for them. Even better yet, come and join us on Tuesday night and you can pray along with us. But today we're going to be challenged to more than, God, would you do this for me? That's a good thing, but we're going to go beyond that. Today we're challenged also to pray, God, what can I do for you? God, what can I do? That's a bold prayer. God, what can I do for you? And maybe it brings back to your memory, John F. Kennedy, in his inaugural address, he spoke the famous words, right? He said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And of course, he said that as a call to action to every American citizen to rise up and be a part of making things better for all. And the bold prayer we're exploring here today is to call every citizen of heaven to do for God what, he is, what his heart is for us to do, to expand his kingdom. When we pray, send me, the Lord could direct you um, into a, in a lot of different ways. How many know, how many know that? Right? That's why it's bold, right? Uh, he may lead you to a different city. Right? He, he wants your influence in a different place, in a different city. Uh, we just recently seen uh, the lives of, uh, of uh, Pastor David and his wife Haley, uh, uh, pastors at our Monroe uh, campus. Their, their prayer had been, I know this for a fact in their life, uh, God, I just, want, I just want you to send me. Wherever you want to take me, please send me. First it was 
to Monroe. They thought they would be there, who knows, the rest of their lives for all they knew. But then God started working on them because they're always saying, Lord, send me. Send me to where you want me to be. And, of course, now uh, they're being sent to Billings, Montana, right? And they're, they're launching a new church there called D.C. Billings. And so they know firsthand the call of God uh, in, in their lives. And you might be thinking, well, how can we partner with them? We can pray for them. Amen? We can pray bold prayers for them. We can give generously to try to help launch that church to partner with them. We can, we can go there. In fact, David and Haley would love it. How many ever make that trick, that trek, you know, uh, you know, uh, heading east? Stop and see them. Encourage them as time goes on. They would really appreciate that. My point is, for them, it takes boldness to pray, send me. Send me. But understand, this prayer isn't just relegated to location or going to a different city or a different place. It has much broader implications than that. Sometimes when we pray, send me, God reveals a calling uh, in your life that you never expected. That was certainly true in my life. About five years ago, when we were considering launching a preschool, we were praying about it. Should we do it? You know, that sort of thing. God laid it on our hearts to approach Megan Giger. Some of you know her because she's just seemed to have a, a heart, a passion for that type of ministry. Now, I don't think Megan ever thought she would be the preschool director. She just had a heart for it. And she then made herself available to God, and lo and behold, God's been using her now for five years already, and that thing has grown and expanded, and it's been a blessing to so many families. God will use you if you say, send me, be prepared. It's a bold prayer. Sometimes when you say, send me, Jesus may be leading you into a different job. That can be scary, can it? But God needs to get light into a new place. God needs to get his influence into some other people's hearts. He might be sending you to a different neighborhood. Sherry and I are now in a new neighborhood after being in one for 27 years. We're now in a new neighborhood, and we're always praying, God, somehow uh, make us light. In fact, God just answered a prayer. We've been praying for a specific, uh, some specific people there and uh, challenging people for me. Uh, but we're saying, Lord, give us opportunity. Give us opportunity. Give us opportunity, right? And yesterday, we went to the park, and lo and behold, they were there. They were there, and we got to strike up a conversation and, and all of that. God calls us, doesn't he? He calls us to develop new skill and different activities in our, in our lives, uh, in the ways we serve him. I hope you understand that you aren't in the home and neighborhood you are. You aren't in the job, the, the school, the activity, the team, um, uh, wherever you are, by coincidence, God places us where we are. He has a ministry where we are to do amazing, eternal things for his glory. When God calls us, it means he's speaking to our hearts. Probably not an audible voice, although that does happen, that could happen, but rather a prompt. How many ever felt prompted? A prompt, a, 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 a sense of, of God is leading me or an intuition, I should be, I really should be doing this to do something, to say something, to, to go somewhere, right? That's, that's how God calls us. If you put your trust in Jesus, you're a Christ follower, you're a Christian, if he's your, your Lord and your Savior, your forgiver and leader, then God has called you. God will call you. Jesus continues to call people to follow him. Just like he did in the very beginning. Come, follow me with his disciples. He's saying, come, follow me. And when, he, when you're following him, he's going to send you. It's not a possibility, or it could be, or, or maybe, or just for some people, no, God calls us. 
God calls every person. First, he calls us to himself. Amen, we need him. We need our sins forgiven. Jesus died for your sins. His blood washes your sins away. He rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven. He wants to use you. But so he first calls you to himself, and then he calls you to his plans. God has a plan for your life. God wants to use you. But understand that God waits for us to respond to that call. He's not going to force you or me to any call that he has for us. We have to respond to that. Let's look at some stories we find in Scripture about how people responded to God's call. You ready to do that with me? Here we go. First, let's look at a man by the name of Jonah in the Old Testament. We find his story in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. So if you have your Bible app or your Bible with you, go ahead and turn there. Um, It says this in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have, I have seen how wicked its people are. And actually the heart here is God wants them to repent. God wants to save these people. God wants to give them a chance with him. Amen? Amen. But Jonah, notice what he does, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. That's quite a response to God's call, right? The Lord's calling Jonah. He wants to send Jonah, but Jonah basically said, not me. Come on. Not me. Instead of send me, he said not me. That's exactly what's going on. What's going on here? Jonah ran away from what God was calling him to. He didn't like the Ninevites. He hated them. They were like the arch enemy of Israel. He doesn't want them to repent. He wants them to be consumed. But God's heart is different than our hearts. God wants to see them saved. And so he's calling Jonah. Is it possible uh, that we have or we are running from what Jesus is actually calling us to do? Maybe we don't like the people he's calling us to. Maybe we're uncomfortable with what he's calling us to. Whatever it is, God's saying, I want to send you, and and we're saying, not me. Are you with me? Pray and send me is a bold prayer. Is it possible you're being prompted by God to do something, to give something, to say something, to help somebody? And you've responded, here I am, God, but not me. I've shared this story, forgive me, far too many times, but that's exactly what I did when the Lord was calling me to pastoral ministry. I wanted Jesus to be my savior. I I wanted my sins forgiven. I wanted to go to heaven, but I wanted to call the shots. I wanted to determine what that looked like moving forward. I didn't, I, I just didn't want him to be my Lord. Quite frankly, that's what I was doing. Save me, but don't send me. When I felt God was calling me into pastoral ministry, I said, not me, not me. And I ran. I ran just like Jonah, but God is an amazing God. He uses all that stuff, right? So I ran to get away from the voice of God to a place where I could only hear God. I couldn't hear any other voices because there wasn't any. There was just God. And so he must have been laughing, you know? Now I have him where I want him. You know what I'm talking about? And it took a while, and instead of not me, it did turn eventually to send me. You see, the abundant life that Jesus promises, and every one of us want, I want that thriving life that God gives, you know, I want so bad, is contingent on us doing his will. It's contingent on us doing what he's calling us. God loves us, and he wants the most wonderful life for us, but will we say yes? 
Will we say yes to that life? We find a different response in the story of Moses in the book of Exodus, if you want to turn there. In Exodus, and I'll start with just one verse here, Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, it's a long story. Uh, many of you know it, but Moses is out in the wilderness, and, and he's tending the flock of his, of, of, of his, uh, in, you know, his in-laws and, and uh, his father-in-law Jethro, and, and basically he's out there, and all of a sudden he sees a bush on fire. That wasn't very unusual, by the way. Bushes would be, uh, go on fire in the wilderness, But what was weird is it wasn't consumed. It wasn't being burnt up. So he says, you know what? I'm going to go take a closer look at this weird thing that's going on. And then verse 4 says, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God puts burning bushes in our lives to get our attention. God called him to the the middle of the bush, from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses calls him. Moses says, here I am. Moses replies, here I am. Now, you know, that's a good start. I mean, would agree with me? At least he's saying, here I am. I'm open. I'm listening. God then goes on to tell Moses that that he's now, he's aware of the suffering, distress of of his people and, and the people that are in slavery in Egypt and all of that. And now God wants to send Moses He wants to send Moses to lead them out of Egypt into freedom and the promised land for which he's promised them. I mean, wow, that's quite a calling, isn't it? That's quite a calling. And we find his response in verse 11. But Moses protested to God. (laughs) Do you ever do that? When you sense God's calling, all of a sudden there's a protest. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? You know, probably, you know, the top one of the most powerful men in the world. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Earlier, earlier we learned that Jonah said, not me. And here we learn that Moses says, why me? Not me. Why me? Who am I? I'm not good enough. Someone else would do this better than I can. Somebody's more talented. Here I am, God, but why me? It's really what he's saying. Moses thought the Lord should send someone, but just not him. We hear this all the time. We say things like this all the time. We say like things like this even amongst ourselves as the family of God, you know. And it's easy to do this. So easy. Why me? Somebody else is better equipped to do it. Pastor David, somebody else could do it. Why me? They've got more money. They should be the ones that give. Why me? I just don't have, you know, the time that that somebody else has. Really? Jonah said, not me. And Moses says, why me? I think the Lord must be saying, who he? You know, come on, what is going on here? Thankfully, though, both Jonah and Moses obey the Lord in the end. So there's hope for us, (laughs) okay? We find a third response to the bold prayer that we're talking about here, send me, from uh, a guy by the name of Isaiah, The prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Isaiah is saying this, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? We even see the Trinity there. I said, Here I am. Send me. This is a bold response. (laughs) Send me. Notice what he doesn't say here. I think it's significant. He didn't ask, where are you sending me? He didn't ask, what's it going to cost me? He didn't ask, what are the benefits to me? He didn't ask all the questions I think so oftentimes we can easily fall into the trap of asking. He just says, send me. Anyone bold enough to say that with me out loud? Here I am, send me. On the count of three, one, two, three. Here I am, send me. 
It's a bold prayer. And when you pray it, you're saying, Lord, call the shot. God, send me into the workplace to represent you. God, send me into my school representing you. God, send me into the neighborhood representing you. God, send me into my world today to represent you, to share your love. Here's my hands. Here's my feet. Here's my voice. Here's my finances. Here are the talents that I have Send me. You'll be amazed, if you'll pray that prayer, how often, how many times in your day that you'll be divinely interrupted to do something for the Lord. God wants to fill us with his spirit, with the Holy Spirit. He wants to give us power, and boldness so that he can send us. God wants to fill us. You know, I was thinking about my son-in-law, Pastor Michael, who spoke here last week. But Pastor Michael, I don't know if you know this, Pastor Michael is a campus pastor here. He's on our teaching team here. Uh, They lead life groups frequently. He's in the worship teams but he works a full-time job um, at Allstate. And it's amazing what God does with Michael at Allstate. Michael has a perspective that is just as much my ministry as anything that is happening in the church. And he has people, there are times the people run over, Michael, you need to go into the men's room. Something's going on there. He goes in there. There's somebody on the floor just rocking back and forth under so much stress. They don't know what to do with themselves. Michael ministers to them. They have people right and left are diagnosed with cancer. Michael, could you please go and console that person? That's not his job, but they know who Michael is. And so he's there consoling those people the best he can in that environment. Over and over it goes like that and the place where he works because he has said, Lord, here I am, send me. Fill me with your spirit. Make me bold. God, I'm available. Here I am, God, I'll say what you want me to say. Here I am, God, I'll do what you want me to do. Here I am, God, I'll give what you want me to give. Here I am, God, my time is your time. Here I am, God, whatever you need, send me. Send me is a bold, life-changing prayer. But it's also exciting and fulfilling. Ask Brooke Miller, missionary that's with us today, who will be sharing a little bit later in our service. Ask her about the journey God has her on. You'll hear a little bit about it. Again, ask David and Haley what it's been like to leave everything behind and go somewhere brand new. Ask Megan, that directs the preschool we talked about. Ask Pastor Michael, who I just alluded to. Just ask, is it fulfilling? Is it exciting? Is it rewarding? Do you ever wonder how people like that, maybe even uh, people close to you, pray this prayer? Do you wonder how Isaiah was able to pray this prayer? They're just normal people. (coughs) They're just like you. They're just like me. How do you fully surrender your life to God? Well, I think Isaiah actually gives us some insight. Let me read it for you, okay? We're going to read a little bit here again from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. This time I'm going to start with verse 1. Are you ready? It was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. That's the key. That's the first key. We have to see God. We have to have our eyes on God. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. 
A tending harem were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two wings, they flew. Wow, right? They were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army or the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I'm doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's army, or the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. Quite a vision, (laughs) right? And in it, Isaiah sees God seated on the throne or the glory of God or whatever it is he's actually seen, the majesty of God and angelic beings are worshiping God and crying out. And when Isaiah gets a glimpse of God, it changes everything. And I submit to you, when we get a glimpse of Jesus who he really is, and what he's really done, it changes everything. Isaiah gets this incredible picture of God's holiness and his goodness that he's to be worshipped. He's everything. And in contrast to God's holiness and goodness, he becomes aware of his lack thereof. I'm doomed, right? He's suddenly aware of God's holiness in contrast to his unholiness. He sees God's righteousness in contrast to his unrighteousness. And he says, it's all over. I can't even live in the presence of God, for I'm a sinful man. You ever feel like that? So don't send me. God could never send me. And then this angel takes this hot coal from the altar and he touches Isaiah's lips and basically it's a picture of purification and and cleansing and the Lord makes him spiritually clean and ready for use. And when God says, you're clean, it doesn't matter what you think, you're clean. And that's the gospel. That's the good news. It's not about what we've done, it's about what Jesus has done. We don't go in our righteousness, we go in his righteousness. He clothes us in his holiness. And so he takes all those sins and he washes them away and he says, now I'm sending you, you're fit. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 7 through 9, but if we are living in the light, the light of God's love, the light of Jesus, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin, all unrighteousness. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth, it says. But if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness or unrighteousness. When you understand both the greatness and, and, and grace of God, it transforms everything. There's no reason I have any business being here talking to you other than what Jesus Christ has done and what he's done in my life. The only reasonable response to God's love and who he is is, here I am, send me. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans 12.1, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, 
the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. How do we worship God with our lives? When God says go, we go. And I get why we oftentimes don't go. You know, we're afraid. Oh, no, I'm not afraid. I'm never afraid. It's because of this and this and this, but I'm not afraid. Yes, you are. You're afraid of not being in control. We're afraid God might call us to something we don't want. We don't want to be. Maybe it's a missionary to a far-off country with no toilets. Right? Maybe it's to some place with weird food and terrible coffee, and we've got good coffee here. Maybe it's to give your time, your treasure, your talents, in essence, who you are. Some are afraid that God might call you to serve because it might, you know, if he calls me to serve, that, that just might not be convenient and comfortable. It rarely is. And you know, it's possible that God might call you to serve in any of the ways I've just mentioned but it's far more likely, can I just say, it's far more likely he's calling you to be a missionary right where you are. A missionary just simply means one sent, sent to your family, sent to your friends, sent to your, your neighborhood. It's a calling to be a missionary at work and on your team and in your school, right, wherever it is. It's more likely God's calling you to serve the people around you. At least it begins there. The people that, that, that you've already been given in your life, the Lord's calling you to maybe stop and listen to somebody that's hurting. Quit rushing around. God is calling you to reach out to someone who's in great need. Open up your eyes. God's calling you to, to buy lunch for a single mom. They're out there everywhere. Or a single dad, for that matter, nowadays. Lord, send me to love people with your love. I want to be a delivery system of your love because I'm a recipient of your love. God might prompt you to work in the toddler room. Oh, no, not the toddler room. Right? Don't worry, it has a toilet. And they eat Cheerios and goldfish crackers. It's not that weird, right? He may lead you to host a life group. Lead a life group. Ooh, that's not in my comfort zone. He may prompt you to foster kids. He may whisper to you, hey, you should work with coffee and connection. It means you're going to have to get here early. He might prompt you to give generously to his work because God's generous and he wants his people to be generous. I don't know what he's going to prompt you to, okay, what he's calling you to, but you are his hands. You are his feet. You are his voice. Think about Jonas. Not me. Think about Moses. Why me? And if we're not saying not me and why me, we've all done it. I've done it. We're saying not now. Here I am, God. But not now. Not convenient. Never will be. But God is looking for people who will say, here I am. Send me. And I will put you on the most incredible journey, abundant, thriving life you could ever imagine. Let's pray. Lord, we're all afraid sometimes. Lord, we all have our own ideas about things. We all want to run our own lives. And yet, Lord, we want you to save us. And we call you Lord. We call you, we say to you, we are your loyal subjects. 
to do your bidding. And so, Lord, work it within us to not just say, here I am. Not me. Here I am. Why me? Here I am, not now. Lord, work it within us to say, send me. Lord, help us to see you for who you are. Holy, good, your majesty, your glory, so that we can see ourselves for who we really are and then what we can be in you, through Jesus. Bless this this wonderful group of people. Lord, I love them, but you love them so much more. And it's exciting to know you want to use them. You want to use all of us. Lord, I can't imagine how incredible it'll feel when someone, someone's eternity is changed because we said, send me. Or how incredible it'll feel when we see change in our community because we've all prayed, here I am, Lord, send me. Or, or God, how awesome it would be this Easter, this Easter weekend, Easter Sunday, that this place would be filled with souls, filled with people that need to know you, that need to know their love, that need to know about your grace and your mercy, all because we said, here I am, Lord, send me. Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.